what's up everyone how you guys doing welcome to the show don't forget the second part of this show is on our podcast platform you to get it anywhere itunes all that jive man you know where to get it don't forget to uh go and download the uh insane throttle roku app we're over there man that one's killing it fire tv as well and as well don't forget to go help us out with uh the 10,000 subscriber goal over on instagram today sad state of affairs sad state of affairs up in toronto longtime boss of the hell's angel charter up there has passed away donnie peterson boy he was something else we used to hear about him all the time so our condolences over to the hell's angels on that enormous loss also we have coming up and this is weird i thought in america when you buy property you're able to use it as you wish especially if you went through all the troubles to get permits to do what you want on said property i guess it don't work like that anymore i guess neighbors can just move into the area and sue you who knew Okay, here we go. We are getting ready to go down our first one. This is an awesome story, man. Out of 106.5. Hampton Angler's waitress gets a $1,200 tip from the Red Knights, baby. Yes, Red Knights are awesome. We support our firefighters 110%. Don't care what anybody says because I'll give you a big finger if you don't. It is what it is. Anyway, they go into who the Red Knights are, and they're everywhere. The Red Knights are everywhere. Uh, they're career firefighters, which is awesome in itself, just like it says. As of, And now, as part of the Red Knights Motorcycle Club, they spend their free time fundraiser, then give the money to a deserving person or organization. Who was the lucky server? Well, on Wednesday night, this past Wednesday, the Red Knights main, all 22 of them went to Angler's Restaurant in Hampton. Their waitress was Emma uh, Gagnon, who been nominated prior to their arrival. She didn't know that, however, and the Red Knights wondered on their first Facebook page if she figured she got in the short straw, I mean, I think about it. She got a banquet room full of people in biker vests to wait on and probably word they get a little rowdy. But they said she smiled and was very sweet to all of them. That's her right there. Now the tip, when the meal was over, a member of the club presented her with a Christmas card and encouraged her to open it. When she did, she found a $1,200 tip. And it goes on to say, uh, I'm guessing that it's going to make her holidays a lot brighter. On their Facebook page, the Red Knight said, You handled 22 guests all in stride with a smile on your face. That's you being you. Don't change who you are. Beautiful stuff out there. Great stuff. Again, that is from the Red Knights Motorcycle Club. I love them kind of stories. Love that kind of stuff. Uh, then we go to a sad state of affairs right here. Uh, a biker has been killed in a crash on Ortega Highway in San Juan. Uh, sad state of affairs. Uh, he was killed uh, in a single vehicle traffic crash on Ortega 74 Highway in San Juan. The crash was reported a little after 9 a.m. on the eastbound highway near Casper Park. A representative from the Orange County Coroner's Office was called to the location, but there's no further information available on that. Sad state of affairs with the motorcycle accident. Sad state of affairs. Now, this is what I was talking about here. Residents of the Atkin County Fight Biker Club for Rural Peace and Quiet. 
And this is on a mini soda. Uh, the Aspen and Birch Woods is the secluded corner of Atkin County, about 100 miles north of the Twin Cities, are dotted with creeks, ponds, and beaver dams. You know, when you talk about beaver dams, that always reminds me of when uh, Phil, you know, Robertson, Duck Dynasty, blew up that beaver dam with dynamite. That was so cool. Uh, houses are Far, few, and between, no sign of city life for miles. And that's what prompted the Norseman Motorcycle Club. They purchased 180 acres, piece of timber, as a place to practice their trail riding skills. And it was for all off-road biking. Now, their new neighbors, since the Norsemen brought the property two years ago, and now they're making efforts to overturn everything. It's always funny when it's just like a raceway here in Rockford. It's been there for 50 something damn years. They start building houses around it and then the people complain about the noise. Well, wait a second here, you dumbasses. You knew that this was here. So you have this thing of entitlement to think you can come in and try to change everything. Exactly is what is happening right now in this case. I guess it's come to a head when the Minnesota Court of Appeals heard a challenge to the license granted to the club earlier this year by the Atkin County Planning Commission. Now, dozens of residents and landowners testified and made comments against the club as the commission debated whether to grant the Normans a land use permit for a riding course that will not host any events, running only workouts and rec, uh, uh, rec uh, walks for the 180 club members. I guess the first vocal opponent was Brian Zimmerman, he lived all his life on the neighborhood fire, uh, family farm. And let's be honest, 180 acres, rural area, give me a break, really? It's not like you're sitting right next to him. But anyway, this is in court. And they're using this guy's suicide uh, to further the cause, which, you know, we're, we apologize for the suicide. Condolences. But in America, you buy a piece of property, you go through all the processes. That doesn't mean uh, somebody new who moved into the area knew about this and then still complains. What kind of America is that? So hopefully the Nordsmen's they prevail in this. It's bad enough with all the stupid rules that governments have about off-road motorcycle trails. Like in Illinois, there's hardly any of them. When you finally do get a spot, people still bitch. Ain't that the way it always works, man? I, I'm telling you. Now, let's go to up north, our main story. Hells Angel Toronto boss, Donnie Peterson. He is reportedly dead at 74. Our thoughts go out uh, to the Angels again. Uh, the president of the Toronto chapter of the Notorious Hells Angels has died. Donnie Peterson, 74, was a longtime presence in the world of Big Smoke Outlaw Motorcycle Clubs. That's from the Toronto son by the way not me and had previously been a member of paradise riders which patched over in 99 ah, good stuff mayor good stuff that's a long history right there to paradise riders uh the cause was not revealed uh he was born in toronto attended at north toronto Co college later studied uh, town planning at york university so that kind of narrative that law enforcement pushes all the time, yeah, don't work too much, does it? There's professionals in these clubs. They don't want to do that, though. Uh, the former president of the Paradise Riders, uh, Peterson, went by the name Sleaze. He was part of a new breed of outlaw biker who tried to clean up their act, insisting he didn't smoke or drink. 
rock on now one more for uh the hell's angels here this one over in oz gofundme has struck again they were trying to raise legal fees for eight members in a murder trial and gofundme said no you cannot do that it's against our terms of service so they took it down just like they did with Rittenhouse, but I bet that killed them when he was found not guilty, and they had to put it back up. Just saying. So that's what happened. Uh, they removed that. Uh, they said it was, uh, let's see here, uh, they raised, well, uh, we covered that story, but we didn't cover, uh, well, I asked in that story, hey, are they going to tear it down? And it looks like they did. Wall of shame time, all the alphabet agencies, sad state of affairs, FBI had sex with prostitutes while overseas. Inspector General Investigation Fines. And there was five of them. They solicited sex from a prostitute. Maybe they were horny. I don't know. Hopefully they were care you know, careful because overseas, man, them hookers, whoo, you're going to bring something home, let me tell you. And it's more than just luggage. Uh, an investigation released by the Department of Justice uh, found four FBI officials engaged in commercial sex with prostitutes while overseas. And a fish, uh, fifth official attempted to uh, a direct violation of DOG and FBI policies. The investigation said the officials lacked candor in failing to report their involvement or other agents' involvement in soliciting sex with prostitutes. Hmm. Uh, I guess uh, one FBI official lied to the uh, OIG, which oversaw the investigation. During an interview followed by polygraph questioning, the individual denied having engaged in any sexual acts with the prostitute. Uh, the OIG investigation found that five officials failed to report contact or relationships with foreign nationals, including foreign nationals from who they procured commercial sex. Again, you did bring a lot home from uh, then foreign ones. You can. But then I have a question. What if it was happening in Amsterdam? Is it still illegal for them to do it? Hey, I'm not defending them, but there's some serious questions here for me. If I want to go over there and get a hum hum and I want a B and G over in Amsterdam, is that something I got to report or something on a passport thing? I don't know. I'm just asking. Maybe, you know, for our listeners overseas, can you help me out on this stuff? Because I can guarantee you, if I go over to Europe to Amsterdam, I'm not going for the marijuana. No, I want to go to the red light district where I can go pick one from the window. I think that is so cool. I can pick whatever broad I want right from the window. So I don't want to get uh, held down in all this nonsense with this paperwork if I got to report this stuff here. And, you know, it's just easier to go to a corner. Just saying. Now, this deal with the land give me a break here, man. When you know that something's there, and if you're not going to like it, why move there? Why do you have to be some kind of jackass that has to cause everybody else headaches, and you got to cost them all kinds of money? It absolutely makes no sense, and I think some of these people, honestly, they do it on purpose. They want to get a rise out of others. That's what this is all about, is getting a rise. Saying, hey, my pecker's bigger than your type of deal. But that's a lot of money to be spent on 180 acres. And they should be glad that somebody's doing something like that. Because the trail system for off-road, uh, you know, quite frankly, sucks. It sucks. It's no wonder you see all these kids riding freaking these ATVs and dirt bikes in the cities. You can't wear them anywhere. They just say, screw it. I'm going to go do it and do it in the packs. So that's a real issue that needs to be addressed at every state level is getting more trail riding. Now, I know Wisconsin, they got a pretty damn good trail system up there. I'm kind of freaking uh, jealous, especially their snowmobile trails. 
you take a snowball trail all the way up the damn state, man. Have bars, food, everything, man, ready for you. Now, that's what I'm talking about. And you would think in Minnesota they do the same thing. Who knows? Bunch of crybabies. That's what them people are. Uh, anyway, don't forget uh, Roku TV. Install that Insane Throttle TV app. A lot of good stuff goes on to that channel as well as Fire TV. Uh, great stuff, man. Uh, I uh, hear BD's going to be coming out with his Biker News at 8.30 right after this show. So if that's the case, go over there visit him a little bit. I'm going over to the morning hoop with China now. I'm going to go give her uh, a headache like I always do. With that, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Rock on. To the extent that pending criminal matters are discussed on this website or YouTube channel, all such charges are merely accusations and all defendants are presumed innocent until and unless proven guilty in a court of law.